Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these things can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending these assets? Have you penetration tested these public assets? Start 2017 by taking a proactive approach to securing your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and see how they can help you sleep better at night. We are back in our Upside Down series. It's Security Weekly, episode 56. And we just covered an impressive amount of security news this week. And we're going to get ready to talk with Don and Tim from IT Pro TV. But first, a couple quick announcements. IT Pro TV slash Startup Security. Use the code SS30. Try it free for seven days. Receive 30% off your monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. To learn more about IT Pro TV's team solution, sign up for a free demo of the supervisor portal and stick around because I'm going to talk to them about some of the stuff that they've got in some ways it's going to help you be a better security leader to do better in your security startups, to understand it all. So there's there's a lot of exciting stuff we're going to talk about. So you're going to want to remember that code because this is going to be your entry to it. Also, you can check out Logarithms webcast. It's coming up Tuesday, September 26th. That's next week. 3 to 4 p.m., Logarithm's Greg Foss is developing an open source tool set called the Phishing Intelligence Engine. It's going to help streamline and automate the entire process of tracking, analyzing, and responding to phishing emails without the need for commercial software. Register for this webcast to hear Greg, Paul Asadorian, John Strand weigh in on phishing attack detection and response and how you can use open source tools to automate these processes. Go register now, securityweekly.com slash logarithm. All right, so let's get down to it. So, so Don and Tim are back. They're from IT Pro TV. Uh, they're they're great supporters of the program, and we have great conversations. I I've been looking forward to this all summer. So, Don, Tim, welcome back, and uh, excited to have you back on Startup Security Weekly. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for having us back. Yeah, I I, I love the setup. I, I love the I love all the stuff you guys are doing. So let's let's talk for a little bit then. Uh, so we just covered. There's so much going on in the security space, and what we've been also talking to people about a little bit here is that w when you look up the startup side, we're still looking at the enterprise place. We've got people that are trying to secure their startups, and they need to think a little differently now because we see that these vectors and these third-party risks are are they're increasing. We've got people that are security leaders that are trying to evaluate startups and understand something. And and one of the things that we talked about in an earlier segment was if you want to hire for a position, sometimes you've got to have the right skill set. You, you've got to actually do the job first yourself. And one of the things that you and I were just talking about were red team, blue team, and, and some of the training and some of the things that you guys have done around that. And in my mind, it, it makes a perfect fit. So tell us a little bit about some of that, that red team, blue team stuff and how that's working out uh, and what people can expect from that. Yeah, you know, when, when we launched our company, we we were creating an IT training organization that, that trained in a, a slightly different way, but we were really covering content that a lot of other organizations have already done, uh, like certification training, which is is very valuable. But once you get out there in the field, once you've got that job and you're working, the certification isn't as important as the actual skill is. And what we found was this kind of gap in the marketplace where there's not a lot of organizations that are teaching the the practical hands-on skill without a huge price tag attached to it. And it's also kind of a one-size-fits-all solution for security training. And so we looked at it and said, there's got to be a better way to do that, to, to get in there and create something a little more customized that says, hey, not everybody is a penetration tester. There's plenty of people out there that are sysadmins that are, are the ones responsible for securing a network. Or if you are a pen tester, you need to know how people secure a network, but you're really attacking the network. It's a different skill set. And so training really needs to be customized that way, where you've got red team training, where you've got blue team training. And, and sure, you might have some people that want to attend both, but usually people will kind of shift into the category that meets their needs. So they might both need to learn how to use a tool like Nmap, but a penetration tester is going to use Nmap differently than a blue teamer would. So that's kind of the approach that we're taking, is we want to make sure that we have that content that's right for the skill that a person needs. So how did you start looking at red, red team versus blue team? So, so I like this. Um, I, like, I like this a lot. And I want to talk about that in a second. But take me through. Uh, you're right. It's an interesting evolution because a lot of us, you know, if you've got training, we want to tie that training to a certification or something I can show HR or somebody else and say, look, we, we spent the money. It was, it was a good choice. And what you're saying is, yeah, that's nice. There's, that's, there's an importance to that. But, but if you want to be good at your job, if you want to continue to grow, 
here's how we do it. And I know you, you guys, I'm impressed at how often you refresh the content and update stuff. We've talked about that before, and I, I think it's a great approach. So how did you start putting this together? How did you figure out what to focus on? Why red team versus blue team? Uh, what's that experience like? So it actually came from a conversation we had with um, Scott Lyons and Josh Marpet from from Red Lion, who I, I know you're familiar with. Uh, that we were we were talking about it, and we, you know our biggest challenge as a company for creating training is finding an expert. You know, where do you find a person who's an expert <laughs> in skill X or product Y? And Scott and Josh were telling us all these different people they knew that could come in and, and fill in that gap, but they were always very specialized. And they would say, well, this person would be really good on the pen testing side, but not good on the defense side or, or vice versa. And as we talked with them more and more, we came to realize that it's not just the teachers that specialize, it's the the employees themselves that specialize. So it makes sense to have the training lined up. Uh, and from there, you know, Tim was the the one who, who kind of said, you know, let, let's create a business model out of this. Let's let's bring that into our, our subscription or our regular packages and and just really shake up the industry with a new type of training that that can really reach out there. So that, that's kind of how it started. Yeah, and I and I think I think you know, we're just now approaching four years old, so the content that we've created has been uh, very specific geared towards the certification base and all the way up through different certifications uh, for security. It might be like CISSP, uh, Certified Ethical Hacker. But when you go beyond that, how do you actually learn how to be a penetration tester or how do you learn how to be a true hardener of networks unless you're working for somebody and you do a lot of on-the-job training or, or forums or groups or trade shows? Uh, there are some people that offer some of the instructor-led training that, that can be quite expensive, but we've always wanted to kind of be the training for everybody, uh, that you don't have to be part of that. So we want to make a price point that allows everyone to have access to it. So how do we do that? Uh, we do that by finding great people who can come in and explain it in the format that we have, and, and we keep it updated. So we're excited about getting that ramped up and going through the end of this year and starting next year uh, really strong on both sides of that red and blue. Now, is that part of the subscription that people already have? Is that how you decided to roll this out? It is, uh, as opposed to, it kind of goes back to like the way we try to operate our business and take care of our members. As opposed to a separate Security Pro subscription, uh, we're going to have it in the IT, IT Pro library. So if you're a subscriber to IT Pro TV, you have access to all of that content, uh, That's awesome. including all the red and blue training that you're going to have. And, you know, we bounced that around a bit because it, it was kind of a tough decision it, because we, we could have launched it as its own product and just said, you know, let, let's start securitypro.tv or and probably or got a higher price point. We and could have. yeah, compared to the industry. But, you know, our, our goal with IT Pro TV was always let, let's have all the IT training you'd want right here in one spot and make it accessible and, and branching out into a separate product kind of kind of defeats that. I mean, it makes sense sometimes when the topic is so different, but. Everyone in IT needs to be learning security right now. It's not like it's great just point. the security officers need it. So that changes things. No, I, I, I liked it a lot. And, it, it, I, and I want to take a second, too, and talk about it because you, you pointed out something I think is really important. And I heard something else I, I want to push on it. Finding qualified instructors is a challenge. I mean, this was a challenge 20 years ago in security because security is moving fast and, and it requires a slightly different mindset. So then to be able to teach about it, you actually have to understand it at a fundamental level and then break down what you did and then explain it consistently. And, and so there's finding somebody who's qualified. But then you also said something, Tim, about, you know, needs to be able to fit in, into our process. And what I get the sense is that you guys have really spent time figuring out. I've, I've been really impressed when you talk about how you measure stuff and how you're tracking it, how you're looking at feedback, how you're looking at engagement. So has that really helped you? Can you find an expert now who's really good at what they do? Um, can explain it fairly well, has a good voice, has the ability to explain it. And are you then able to kind of guide them so that you're really extracting that that value out and presenting it in a way that the audience is really able to act on it? Is that part of what makes this so successful? I think I think it's one of the most important things that we have when it comes in the area of security, and really in a lot of things, but mainly in security, is that we have people who have true hands-on experience that do this all the time. So you know, our plan, the people that we've talked to about doing this are the professionals that are doing this every week, not teaching, but actually performing and, and honing those skills so they know what the latest is out there in the world when it comes to trying to hack or harden. So taking those people who with the real world skills who may have teaching skills, but it's really the knowledge that's most important. And then when you engage in the format that we have, that we have a like a host 
what we call a host and a subject matter expert. And having that conversation, it, it lets a person who might not be used to teaching and communicating like that much more relax. And that's where we bring personality to information. So it's more of a, a casual engagement of uh, communicating, like conversational. Like, here, there's eight of my friends. Let's talk about how to do this. And that allows people who are professionals in the world to come in and do that. Don't you agree? Yeah, and, you know, it, it really, it, it's actually not that hard for us to find people that are really talented in a particular product or skill, people that are really good penetration testers. You know, we're fortunate to know a lot of people that do that. But it's really hard to find somebody who really knows the product and can talk, <laughs> you know, that has good personal skills that can communicate and, and give you a good learning experience. So that's really been the challenge. And so we've been getting out there kind of like the the social butterflies of IT and trying to meet as many people <laughs> as we can to, 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 to find those people. Because it, it is a rare gem to find somebody who's not an introvert you know, and can, can actually talk. You know, maybe an IT, but a developer with personality, that's tough. <laughs> so I think we have a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you know, too, then that that's I mean, that, this is why I, I love the way that you're looking at uh, bringing a lot of this stuff to people. And, and I, I've been following you guys on Facebook and I watch some of the live videos that you guys push out. I mean, the quality is fantastic. I mean, I I get jealous watching you guys right now with the setup going, oh, man, I, I totally need some of that. So, I, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, you guys are definitely investing in things that make sense. But I you, you're right. I mean. Tim, as you're talking about it, you make it conversational. You can draw the stuff out, and you're right, Don, too. There's there's having knowledge and there's being able to convey and communicate that knowledge. But then by you sifting through it and finding it and adding that into the subscription, it's a huge it's a huge benefit for people because you're essentially taking the risk away. You're saying, look, you, you, you like all the other stuff that we've done. Then trust us that we're going to keep bringing this stuff to you. And I... I like that. Uh, I like that a lot. Let's go back for a second, red team, blue team, and I'll, I'll, I'll share something I think is kind of interesting. And I'm curious, I know you guys are just doing this. I'm curious if you're seeing any of this yet um, or some insights you might have for current subscribers or people who want to try out that seven-day trial and, and see what this is like. I've had a number of security leaders, both on the startup side. Um, one of the things that happens a lot if I take a briefing is I'll talk to a startup leader and I'll say, what does a security leader in the enterprise today need to know? So I'm not just talking about the people doing the enterprise level stuff uh, and, and getting their jobs done and doing them well. I'm asking about the leaders. And, and a trend I've noticed that's been popping up over the last couple of weeks is they really need to understand red teaming. They need to understand it. They don't have to be experts at it, but they need to understand it. So as soon as you talked about having insights and training on red team and blue team, I went, oh, that's fantastic. Because I got another pitch briefing a while ago that said that they think security leaders and startup leaders should moonlight doing things like bug bounties and, and doing side projects. And we've heard for years people should try open source stuff. And so as I'm, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm sitting here saying, whoa, so what you're telling me is, right, and we've already talked about bringing your team in and using the supervisor portal. What I've seen a lot, and I'm, I'm curious if you guys are seeing the same thing, a lot of times somebody say, well, this is great for my team. And I'll say, cool, what training did you do? Oh, well, yeah, I'm very busy. I, I don't have time. And, and we talked right before we came on air about, you know, what are we doing for leaders? What are we doing for leadership? What I kind of like about this is if you're a security leader today, you need to kind of keep up with what blue team stuff is. But there's no better way now to get your head wrapped around some red team stuff than being able to do some of this. So are you seeing are you seeing an uptick in that? Do you are you looking at how that's working out? And does this maybe create an opportunity for somebody who is a team leader who already got their certifications that now whoa, they can get in and they're going to lead by example with their team and they can sit around and they can talk about some of the different training. What, what are you guys finding so far as you're, as you're rolling this out to folks? So what we've found is that it's, it's not realistic to say like the CIO should attend web application <laughs> penetration testing courses, yeah. right? So it's not, I mean, it might be nice, but it's just not realistic for that to happen. They're, they're focused on business. And, and a lot of times they're, they're people who hold MBAs and, and they're, they're very smart at what they do, but they're not security professionals. And so what we did is, and, and this was actually, I want to give full credit to Red Lion on this one, right? So Scott and Josh had a great idea is they said, you know, red team is good, blue team is good. And, and sometimes people cross a line and you get purple team or pink or whatever color you want to go with it where it blends. Uh, but they suggested that we do two other tracks and we're actually, we're rolling forward with this, uh, which they dubbed one, the yellow team, which was 
uh, security for people who are architects. If you're designing a network, if you're designing a solution, you need to be designing security into that. And so there, there will be uh, soon training that's built around that, but also a dedicated management track a track that was focused on managers because a manager, they need to understand what HIPAA compliance is. They need to understand what PCI compliance is and what requirements there are. They might not be the person doing the pen testing. They might not be the person actually implementing the backup, but they need to be aware that they need it and, and understand that it's not a, how do I justify this? It's a, I do this because it's legally required <laughs> and I've got to do it. <laughs> so uh, we'll actually be creating content that is specifically tailored to those managers. And it, you know, some of it will be like abbreviated content where they, they get it in a shorter format because that's the, the realistic amount of time they have. But other content will be very in-depth based on, on what their need is. So trying to create that role-based training, I think, is important to keep people engaged and, and learning what they feel is most important. Yeah, and our roadmap has some information for C-suite also. So imagine you're in a boardroom and, and a company is talking about uh, a malware or ransomware, and they fully don't understand uh, the pain points and, and what the potential you know could be. Well, we have smaller courses that we have that will be like two hours. It's actually on the CompTIA track that they're rolling out for all the different C-suites. So it's not just the security manager, it would be all C-suites uh, managers to be able to access that information to make better decisions. That sounds compelling. That sounds like you're, you're, you're definitely fitting an area that makes sense. All right, talk to me a little about the experience then. Um, so I wanna go learn more about Red Team stuff. Do, do you, are you tracking how people use this? Because uh, I'm, I'm personally, I'm always interested are people sitting down, are they giving it an hour a day? Is it uh, they're grabbing a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there? What do you recommend when somebody engages on the platform? What should they be looking for? And, and who's most successful? How do they need to think about approaching the training that you guys are able to provide people? So when we designed our training, it was it was designed to be easy to consume, right? We, we film it in a TV show format, not a classroom format. So it's not like you need to say, I'm going to dedicate an hour and just focus right on the screen and watch this. It's more more like a TV show. You, you can certainly focus in on it and watch it, or you can just play it in the background while you're doing your job. And we find a lot of people do that. We'll, we'll see some people have six hours of viewing a day. And you look at that, and I, I went to college. I know that I could not learn for six <laughs> hours in a row. And it's just not my style. But to have a TV on while I'm doing my regular work, that that's a pretty easy thing to do, and people resound, uh, respond to that well. Yeah, there's about 25 or 30% that are watching it on a TV on a Roku or Apple TV device, and then we have another good portion that on a mobile device that might be streaming the audio only because they're in a train or commute. So I think people will uh, consume it however is best fits their needs, uh, same way you might listen to a podcast, you know, give me 30 minutes to an hour a day whenever I get a chance. Yeah, for the and then people, there are people that really focus on what they have to learn because of a work product or a work function. For the people that are studying for like a certification, they're the ones who will nail down a rigid schedule. They'll say, I'm right. going to study one hour a day. Okay. I'm really going to focus. But when it's a real world skill, a lot of times people just leave it on in the background and they'll, they'll kind of listen. And, and when they hear a skill being talked about that they recognize as something they can use, like, whoa, wait a minute, let me watch this. Yeah. And yeah. they start you know, kind of paying attention. A good and, IT pro is always learning. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's really what I find is one of the best oh, experiences. Like I like that a lot. All right, so I, I love the fact that you guys are always looking at this, you're always innovating. Uh, it was a couple months ago. What's something that's kind of surprised you? So as you've, you've looked over the summer, uh, as you've kept looking at what's working and where you're going, and obviously you've introduced some changes, what was one of the ahas that you've had over the last couple months in terms of either how people are consuming content or something that's kind of shifted the way that you guys are thinking about things? Maybe that led to the Red Team, Blue Team, Security Pro stuff. Maybe something different. What's what's kind of if you think back over the last two three months, what's what's shifted? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll go real quick. You, we were talking about the quality of the product that we have, and and we brought in a director of production who has 25 years of television experience, and he wow. ran and started the SEC network here at University of Florida for like 185 games per year uh, for the Gators, and uh, to have him come in and dial in our cameras and the quality of our lighting. Uh, if you tune into the live feed today, and they're probably still going if, if, if you're live for another hour or two, that live feed is just incredibly awesome. It looks like it's 4K. It is, it is really good. So you say, what's the wow thing? Is I didn't think that the quality of our stream could really get better, and it really has. And we, <laughs> we're making investments in the right kind of people to bring a better experience to all of our members. So we're always looking to do that. Yeah, and I know uh, for me, 
every now and then we'll have a, a host or an SME or somebody who's here and they'll have a little downtime. And so they'll get in front of the camera and just kind of film some random content, just something for the heck of it. And every now and then we'll film something like that and the viewers will just love it. They'll eat it up and it'll lead to more content. And we've had that happen a few times over the last uh, couple of years. But over this summer, I, I know I started a Linux track, just you know, standard Linux training. And because of, of people deploying in the cloud more, we're seeing Linux in, in pretty much every company, even companies that used to be entirely Microsoft shops. And that type of training has really started to, to rocket forward. And I created a, a specific uh, securing Linux series, like just security techniques. And not only did the viewers like it, they started suggesting things like, hey, you should do an episode on fail to ban or this product, or that product. And so we just started adding it to that content and growing it as, as the week went on. You know, we, we kept adding more stuff to it. it. Turned out to be a lot of fun. And the the view rate on that, like the, the viewer numbers are just through the roof. So uh, it gives us a chance to kind of feel the pulse of the industry and, and see what people are looking for. And, and as long as we're dynamic and fast about it, you know, we're, we're a small company, we're agile, we can create that content really quick. People eat it up. That's worked out well for us. You know, that's one of the things I like to mention in the areas of security. Because our format, the way that we create, if we create content on Monday, it's on the web on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. So within 24 to 48 hours, that course that we created or that episode, those three or four episodes that we'll do in a morning or afternoon, is, is on the web two days later. When you're teaching about security, it is the fastest access to that content absent of a live class. Uh, so that is critically important and one of the air, one of the reasons that we want to specialize in the areas of security. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I, and that's one of the things that really impressed me as I talked to you guys is that you've, you've really looked at the process of that. And, and as you just pointed out, right, you're still amplifying the production, bring it up. And, you know, Don, you just kind of pointed to another question that I had. So are you, how much of the new content that you guys are developing is based on your scouring and reading headlines and talking to people and listening or are you at the point now where you can both look at the, the numbers and the trends and people are writing in, what about this, what about this, what about this? Are you at that point where a lot of the growth is almost organic because you're just responding to the questions that your members have? We, you know, we, we get a lot of that and we probably could rely just on that at this point, but we don't. I, I always worry that uh, sometimes there's news articles, there's things that, that hit the news wire that... Uh, the media presents a certain way that's not necessarily accurate. And so we'll get a lot of viewers that will reach out to us and say, oh, yeah, you, you really need to tell us about this problem. It's it's an epidemic. It's horrible. And we look at it and we're like, well, really, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> and if you just patch your servers like you're supposed to, then it's really not a, a big deal. That That's the real epidemic is people not patching their servers. But, you know, the media will blow up just about anything. So we, we always try <laughs> and, and watch both. That way we've got a, a good ground on the, the, the data we represent. <laughs> I, I like that. All right, so let's talk a little bit more then. You said you're, you're doing some stuff for the C-suite and you're looking more at it. And I know we've talked before about leadership. How do you start to incorporate stuff like that into your library, right? Because you, you've already made a successful transition from helping people get prepared for certifications. And now you're saying, no, no, security is dynamic. And as you point out, Tim, I, I think it's really important. We can record on Monday and you've got value on Wednesday. That That's huge. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, one of the trends we're seeing is a lot of folks are being promoted. There's a new demand for CISOs. There's a new demand for security leadership. And I think a lot of people are kind of waking up one day and saying, wait, I'm a leader now? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, what do I need to do? And, and maybe it's not that blunt. Right? And, and so I'm, I'm not trying to disparage anybody, but if they've already got access to a training library like yours and, and that type of content, what should they be looking for uh, in terms of how IT Pro is going to help them as their career progresses to start to think about some of these things? How are you guys thinking about that? And what, what are what, either what's available today or what can people start looking forward to? Well, you know, in the area of always creating content that's effective for us, uh, the BizPro library, we talked a little bit about it last time for that areas of entrepreneurship, leadership, teams, and sales. And you're right, when someone continues to get promoted who might not, maybe in IT and maybe already intellectually has been gaming their whole life, so their social skills might not be as, as great. Uh, when you're leading a team, it has to do with a lot of trusting your team, empowering your team, teaching your team, counting on your team, and you got to build that team structure uh, because you're only as successful as your weakest weakest link in the power of your team. So uh, we, are, we have some, John Spence, who's a professional speaker, uh, who happens to live in Gainesville. He's helped us create some content. We have a roadmap for many more 
about leading effective teams and leading technology teams. So it specifically addressed those types of issues uh, for people to, uh, how to how to be a better leader because there are many opportunities that if you can have everyone around you be just as strong and they're fighting for your back, uh, they'll do anything for you and that's what ultimately will you want and will make your organization successful. And we've started branching into other areas like uh, ITIL and mm -hmm. uh, ISO 20000. I know um, PMI's PMP project management, uh, Agile. Those are all leadership, we'll call them technologies, right? It's not, it's not a software program that you run, but it's a, a skill and a technique for managing your organization. And a lot of people, if they would if they would manage their environment using ITIL practices, for example, and in those practices, it calls for proper security at certain steps along the way. You know, it all goes hand in hand if management puts it in place, if they use the right framework. And if they're just learning or just starting from scratch, don't reinvent the wheel. There's a ton of other companies that have already been through this. So you benefit from frameworks like ITIL to be able to say, yep. all right, I don't know what I'm doing, but let me structure off of this because these are recommended best practices. So we we found that that content, while it's not an IT type thing at in the traditional sense, it's not setting up a server, it's the processes around it that's equally important. And so we started incorporating that into our library. And I'm not trying to make this sound like an infomercial or, or anything, <laughs> but when you're an IT pro subscriber, you get the biz pro library. So it's already included in your subscription. You also get the that's office awesome. pro and the dev pro for developer content, all the DevOps type subjects. Yeah, look, I, I'm always interested in the in the business models, right? And the way that, that we think about this type of stuff. And, and I personally favor the approach that you guys are using, which is let's just keep expanding value. Let's keep adding it in. But, you know, even as I'm listening to you now, I love... We come across. I come across a lot of people that are that are newer in their careers, and they'll say stuff like, "Well, I'm not a leader yet, but I want to be." And what I just heard, Don, was that, but they can go. They can go get. They don't have to get PMP certified, but if they want to go understand the basics of it, or they want to become right. I, I think a lot of times in our in our culture, and definitely in technology, we'll substitute familiarity for a concept for some actual competence in it. If they're an IT Pro TV member subscriber, then they actually get the ability to gain some of that competence, but they can at, at least gain a much clearer understanding of it, which if you think that you want to be a manager one day or you want to move into a position of leadership or you want to just be more effective where you are, as you said, you don't always have to recreate the wheel. So I, I like the idea that as a, as a leader, I can go learn more about red team stuff and I can try it. No one's going to expect you to turn into a pen tester overnight. And I'm certainly not suggesting people moonlight as pen testers, but if you want to go talk to red team or you want to go hire people better, having a fundamental understanding of their skill sets is certainly going to be important. So are you starting to are you starting to see people do some of that cross training on their own or when they're a member do you do you suggest ideas for people? Do you help them kind of carve a path through things and and help them fill their docket? How does that work? What's that experience like? Yeah, you know, when we were in in our early days when the company was new, we only had a handful of courses. Our, our library wasn't that large. And over the years, we create new content every single day. Now we've got five studios turning out content. Our library has grown to be really large. And we found that people were getting lost. You know, it's like stumbling into the jungle looking for one particular tree. That's kind of what we had. And so we started creating career roadmaps which were like guidelines that would say, what, what exactly is it you intend to do? Do you want to become a CIO? Do you want to be a, a pen tester? Well, here's where you need to go from the beginning all the way to that position and kind of walking through each step along that way. And it's important that if, if somebody wants to uh, be on the defense side or if they want to become a, a, a red team pen tester or whatever, that they get the fundamentals, that they start at the beginning and, and they move through it. And they might already have the real world experience that lines up with that so they can skip things. But you want to skip things you already know. You don't want to skip things you don't know. And so how do you identify that? So we've started to create roadmaps, and we actually have a, a career concierge, uh, which is one of my, my favorite features of the company, where if you just don't know, you can call and talk to Marisha or somebody, and they'll they'll give you advice and, and, and help walk you through the areas you should be studying and the, the courses that line up best with what you want. But at the end of the day, you might just feel like learning something, not, not even necessarily job-related. Hey, I just I want to learn more about databases. And so you watch a few videos, you start to learn about databases and who knows, maybe that that spurs you on to a great career as a DBA or you realize, wow, databases suck. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. I had this conversation with one of my team members this week and we were talking about, you know, where he might fit in the future. And I kind of had the I gave him the Wayne Gretzky quote of skate where the puck is going to be. Well, <laughs> if you do that for your career, 
where do you want to be when a position opens up in a year? You need to all be already be prepared for that and not in a year say, hey, I want to start to do that. You need to start now and start preparing, whether it's you want to be on a red team or you want to be in leadership or whatever it might be. Learn now and start immersing yourself. Uh, stop listening to the radio or watching stupid TV shows. You know, invest <laughs> in yourself and make those sacrifices. They'll pay off in a very short period of time. Yeah, well, and, you know, if they're going to just watch TV anyway, at least now they can get broadcast quality quality from you guys and, and enjoy it. Are you, so then one, one last piece then. I'm going to go to the other side of it. You know, we see a lot of startups are, are forming up. We had a guy uh, in an interview last week who said, you know, it's interesting. We keep saying we've got a shortage of people to do security work, and yet we have, you know, 2,000 startups. We have security people jumping into it. There's kind of a disconnect here. But we do know that there are a lot of organizations that are kind of struggling with it. And what it sounds like is if they had a subscription, they can take people that have the right aptitudes, the right interests, the right skill sets, and they can start to develop the skills that they need to be on the red team internally or to be on a blue team or to start to make that work out. Are you seeing an uptick in that? Are, are there people that are coming to you to say, you know what, what we've decided is instead of trying to hire for something that maybe we don't understand, we have good people internally. Maybe they're working a help desk today. Maybe they're doing some sort of, of, of desktop or admin support. They've expressed an interest in security. This is a cost efficient way and, and a successful way to keep them on the job working with us and the train up. Is that happening? Maybe is that even the core of your business? Or is that something that maybe we need people to think about a little bit differently because we can help them start to solve some of the perception of a shortage? You know, I, I will say that, yes, there is an uptick in that. We are seeing more people trying to develop their own in-house talent. But I want to add more to that, though, and say that uh, it's a bad idea to do that exclusively. Like, if you just decide boy, we need a better security infrastructure. So I'm going to take three people that uh, just, they like computers, and I'm going to run them through a training program, and now I've got my own red team, blue team, my my chief security officer or whatever. It, it's not a good idea to build your entire security around green professionals, you know, people that, that are brand new into the field that have learned on their own or at their own pace. You definitely want to at least have a leader with some experience behind them, right? And then, you know, using tools like Nessus and Nmap and Burp Suite, you can learn how to run those tools. You can learn how to run those scans and, and, and do them effectively. But how do you know if it's enough? How do you know if you've, you've seen enough of your environment? And really, real-world knowledge is where you get that. So if you're building your entire department off of simply, you know, completely self-trained people with no field experience, you may luck out and they may be great and find everything and it's it's wonderful, but there's not really a good substitute for field experience for actually getting out there and doing that work. So while you can certainly use a program like ours to uh, educate and develop your talent and get them to a higher level, you want to make sure that you are mixing in real world experience, that you are mixing in people from outside. So if, and I kind of equate this to the 1980s where in the 1980s, an IT guy was a, a photocopier technician, right? You know, everybody had a copy <laughs> machine, but they didn't necessarily have computers. And over time, more and more companies had computers. And the first actual IT people were simply whoever it was in the office that managed to clean a virus the first time. You know, so, oh, I cleaned a virus off my computer at home. Congratulations, you're the new IT guy. <laughs> so, you know, with security, you don't want that. You don't want somebody saying, well, hey, this one time I ran malware bytes and I cleaned off a, a, a malware package. And that's not your next chief security officer, at least not right then. They need to get experience. They need to, to get out there and do it. Now, the thing is, it's hard to go out and get experience if no one will hire you without experience, right? There's that gap. And that's where where we come in is that we can train you and start to give you those skills and give you a, a practical trade that you can apply to then get out there and do it. But I, I always recommend a, a mixture that you can develop your own in-house talent, but mix in some real world experience in there to, to really get a good stable team. And I'll say on the enterprise level, we have seen an uptick of, of accounts where they're requesting it for uh, 2000 users or 3,500 users. So what I believe to be happening when we have the discussions is they're getting more for everyone, so everyone has access to the information. And I believe that they're going to be making course assignments for that end user security awareness training that we have. Sure. So I, I see uptick in that. Security is obviously important every time this most recent event with Equifax happens, something like that happens, that uh, um, it becomes much more aware so people have an emphasis on it. So you know those type of incidents 
unfortunately happen to be great business for us because all of a sudden everybody wants to jump in. Yeah, we uh, we actually just created a, a couple of video series. There was one that was just 45 minutes long. It's the, the shortest course on our entire site, uh, but it was designed <laughs> as an onboarding video. So you hire a new employee, regardless of their position, right? They could be the CEO or they could be the mailroom clerk and they watch this 45 minute video and it gives them the basic responsibilities that a, an employee has for security. You know, the, the very simple things. And then we did a... Uh, I think it was like a six hour version of that, which was the punishment video. So somebody just made a mistake and clicked on a link in a phishing mail. So, okay, now they've got to come and watch this six hour series and now they get it more in depth. And then you get the actual security training that's designed for the IT professionals. So kind of addressing those different needs is an, an important part of any kind of training program. I love it. I love it. I love talking to you guys. This is so much fun. All right, so what do we have looking forward to between now and the end of the year? You've got Security Pro rolling out. You just mentioned you got some security awareness stuff. What um, what are some of the things that people can look forward to between now and the next time we get a chance to talk to each other? I would say uh, stuff that you won't see, but things will perform better is <laughs> a lot of infrastructure on the back on the back end. This year has kind of been a, a, a year of infrastructure for us and moving to our new facility at the end of last year. Um, rebuilding a lot of the back end of our website. Uh, there'll be some front end changes that you know as we talk about the number of courses that we've created, that things kind of get lost. Unfortunately, we, that's that's kind of happened. It's been a good problem, but it's, it's happened. So we're going to have a new user interface, which I think will be dynamic, and each user will get identify much more information that's relevant to them. Like, what are people like you watching the most of? So people can be aware, kind of a social side of it, aware of what others are, are watching, because maybe they need to take a course like that. So. Uh, that will be rolling out by the end of the year and then launching the Office Pro, the Dev Pro, and the Biz Pro as a $9, $14, $24 type of subscription. Yep, there's that. And then uh, I think you'll be really surprised, and uh, I want to throw some kudos out to to Scott and Josh at Red Lion. Uh, they have helped us line up some talent for the security track that are just amazing people. They're big names, names you guys will recognize. And so I think if you come to us three months or even five months from now, you're going to see some training in there that is just really impressive stuff that I think will really, really make a big difference out there in the security world. That's awesome. That's really exciting. And I, I'm going to look forward to, you know, as soon as you said it, Tim, I, I love this idea of here's what people like you were doing, right? I mean, Amazon does that, right? Here's here, people that bought that book also like these books. You bought that thing. You like these things. I'm, I'm going to be really curious to see how that works out. And it sounds really compelling. Uh, that's great. And, and Scott and Josh are fantastic. They're good friends of the program, uh, doing a lot for it. So I, I'm excited. I, I get excited every time I talk to you guys. So I'm, I'm already looking forward to the next time. And, uh, and thanks for sharing with us and, and helping people figure out how to make their journey a little bit better. Uh, I gave everybody the code already. Um, so if they just go to itpro.tv, uh, startup security, slash startup security, use code SS30, you get a free seven-day trial, and you get 30% off your monthly membership, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, anything else, guys, that people should think about or know to come check you guys out? I was just going to say, uh, reach out anytime. time. I'd love to have a conversation with you about uh, an update on the Series A uh, raising that we're working on. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll follow up on that. I'll, I'll look forward to that, actually. That'll be a blast. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, everybody, for listening. It was a big week. Lots of stuff here. Episode 56 is in the books. Paul will be back next week. I'll be here, and I'll still be a sand hobo. Have a great week.